Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here with Mike Matthew Fitness. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, it ain't working without you guys. All right, speaking of working, we just got finished working over there on this bathroom. This bathroom from hell. That uh, it's like everything we've got for this bathroom or the homeowners picked out, it's just been like literally something I've never done before. It's a different, you know, this, that, and the other. It looks good. But that damn light fixture that we got in the hallway. <laughs> it, it, this shit was, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, like, this stuff was so funny because it's got like a shade that goes on it, right? And it's like cloth paper. And it's got like a little tab on each one of them, like a thin. So you got a top piece and a bottom piece. And so you got to clip one on there, but it's just like a little piece of the cloth. It just drops in there. And you got to go all the way around the circle. And then you got to do another one on the bottom. And well, it was so fun. Made, well, so well, well, I tell you what, it, it was funny because Mike was sitting in there and he was putting it together. And I was watching him, you know, one, boom, boom, going all the way around. And then one popped off. And it was like it was happening in slow motion. Then the next one popped off. And then the next one, it was like, dot, 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 boom. And the whole thing fell off. And he just looked up to me like, this piece of ratty shit. I wish I had the camera, because it was hilarious. But we got it up on there. Go back tomorrow, get the shower doors put in after the stuff dries and things. And touch up the paint. And they'll be good to go on this bathroom. But um, I'm sitting here thinking about a couple of things. You know, we've been dealing with the whole coronavirus, which sucks. And believe me, it sucks because if it wasn't for corona, we'd be in Canton, Ohio, like the Hall of Fame right now, getting ready for the first freaking preseason game. And this sucks. But it's always next year. Maybe. Maybe if the shit's cured. Right now, I don't know that it's going to be any different next year. Okay, We can hope. We can hope. I, right now, I'm just dealing with the situation right now. The same as always next year. Yeah, there might be next year, right? But have we gotten a taste of what life is going to be when Jerry Jones is gone? Think about this. The last time we've heard any statements from Jerry Jones was April, I think. That since that time, Jerry Jones has been MIA. You know, right now, the last I heard, he was on his yacht, was going to Alaska, you know, for a tour or whatever. It may be that he's social distancing on his yacht to make sure he doesn't get corona because he is, you know, in his 70s. Um, he's had some health issues and things. And the Cowboys, over the last, you know, five or six years, have been slowly working a secession plan. When you think about Will McClay, coming in being the head of scouting. When you think of Stephen Jones becoming the guy who handles the deal with money. And make no mistake about it, Stephen Jones has a lot of power and influence on the team because you can go back to the old Des Bryant situation. You know, Jerry Jones was the one who, you know, Des is part of the family and stuff. We love Des and, you know, this, that, and the other, right? But I mean, remember what I told you guys. I know you guys say, I don't know shit that I'm just a guy, you know, with a voodoo doll and a day job, but I told you guys Des Bryant was gone, and the reason I told you that was because of the way Stephen Jones acts. Stephen Jones makes no bones about what he's going to do. Jerry Jones is, is all over the place. You know, Jerry Jones, oh, we want Johnny Manziel. Oh, you know, Adrian Peterson, we'd like to see him. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll put all kinds of crazy stuff out there. Stephen Jones don't hold any punches. You can look at Dak Prescott's contract, and he said, Dak's got to understand he's got to leave money on the table, and you see, they didn't work anything out. Jerry Jones, on the other hand, you know, a deal's intimate. We're we, we about to sign this thing. So you can already see, Stephen Jones tells it exactly like it is. He's not going to bullshit you. And right now, you see what's going on. We, we, we Technically, the star's open. For two weeks and two days now, 
the Cowboys have been doing business. The rookies have been coming in and getting their testing done. They started two weeks, two days ago. The veterans a week and two days ago they have had the first team meeting. You've had Stephen Jones actually having a, a meeting with the press and stuff, talking about, you know, well, how much they like Dak Prescott, and things they're looking forward to. This is how the Dallas Cowboys are going to be now without Jerry Jones. You're not going to hear these crazy press conferences and stuff. You know, I want me some glory holes, you know. Or, or you know, if you don't know your anatomy and you're in a car wreck and, and you end up chopping your arm off, you end up just running out the car into the woods and just bleed to death. But when you know your own anatomy, you put the tourniquet on and you end up stopping the bleeding. I still to this day don't know why. We got that analogy and stuff, but see, that's the kind of stuff you get from Jerry Jones. But this is how it's going to be without him. So the question is, do you like the Dallas Cowboys where you're not getting Jerry Jones doing a weekly radio show, Jerry Jones coming through with a press conference with all kinds of crazy things that are going to happen that don't work out and anything else, and that when you get Stephen Jones, you know this is the way it is. And that Stephen Jones, unlike Jerry Jones, who looked at the players, and you can look back, you know, in the 2006s and 7s and 8s and stuff like that, where Jerry Jones was more loyal to the players and was signing these contracts to guys without really thinking about the long term ramifications. You think about the Jay, uh, uh, Jay Ratcliffe contracts or the Marion Barber, who was, you know, uh, shared the starting role that he got a $54 million contract with the Miles Austin after having one good year knowing he had hamstring issues, got his deal. This is the way it's going to be. So for those who pine for Jerry Jones being gone, the question is, do you like this instead? What do you think, Mike? People, you know, th th there's the old saying, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. A lot of times you think that something else is going to be better. And I can say this about Dak Prescott because there's so many guys out there, so many so-called Cowboy fans that think that the Dallas Cowboys would be better off without Dak Prescott. Yes. And you don't know until you don't have something. There's a lot of... A lot of y'all out there that think, oh man, you check, did you check out that girl? Man, that girl, she is fine. She's fine, man. Yeah, man, I'm gonna go get me some of that. And then you turn around and find out what you had over there, it, it, it's not all it's cracked up to be. You really had the good stuff over here. You found out that this girl, she crazy, she crazy, okay? And now you'd have gone over there and you lost what you had over here. So you got to be careful grass is not always greener on the other side and sometimes be careful what you wish for because you just might get it and now you got some real problems hmm. I wonder how long it's going to be before we actually hear from Jerry Jones but it, it's still uh, I'm sorry it's still it's still to me my spider sense it is clicking because this is crazy if the Cowboys I think uh Mike McCarthy said that they'll have like the grand opening like you're more used to. I think somewhere around the 14th or the 15th of training camp. If we don't hear something from Jerry Jones right then and there, I'm going to say that something that happened, maybe he's been abducted by aliens or something. If Jerry Jones don't say something then, I, I don't know what to tell you because that, that, this is getting kind of strange. You don't think it's strange? It's the virus. Trying to keep them away. Yeah, but uh, you know, th th this is not like old times where you have to be there. You could uh, look. We saw Amari Cooper um, have his interview and stuff by, by Skype. You know, we did the draft virtual reality from his boat. You telling me he can't have a press conference on his boat? I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, it's got me thinking something's going on that we just don't know about. Jerry Jones. It's since the time he bought the Cowboys in 1989, I can guarantee you there's not been 
five months where Jerry Jones didn't have a press conference about something. Well, you can't have you can't have press conference the way they have it anymore. Uh, I'm sorry that that he ain't no that he ain't said something. I'm telling you something's up. Something is up. But then why should Stephen Jones? You got his number? I don't know anybody who works for. Well, I don't know about this guy. If anybody's got Stephen Jones' phone number, let me know. I'll, I'll yeah, give him a buzz and ask him. His body's or better out. yet, if somebody's got Jerry Jones' number, I'll call him and ask him. I'm sure he'll talk to him. All right, hope well, you guys... Well, I'll watch it today. Because ever since the Clefton Bargain agreement, they... But, they like, like I got five. Rogers' phone. You think I got Roger Goodell's phone number? I mean, I've, I've hung drywall with him in New Orleans and stuff, and done playgrounds with him, but it's not like, you know, him and I hang out and we're best buddies, and I'm invited to his you man cave in New want, York. You won't be questioning if we win a Super Bowl in the next couple of, in the next couple of years. What happened to Jerry Jones? If, if he's just sitting there just kicking it to himself. Well, I'm not going to put that out there because I don't want that to come back in my face. But i got to tell you, I think the team is laser focused right now. So. I look and see. see I, I think see, actually the other, the other getting rid of Jason no, Garrett. No, no. The other thing, too, is Jason Garrett's the only thing that Jerry Jones really had. That's the last thing he was holding on to. And then, and then when it didn't work out, he got up and said, "After this, I'm going. I'm going. I'm leaving. I'm going out to see him." I'm not, okay. not, not talking about. I'm talking about doing that game. When he got up and left, I, I'm done. Because it was just so disgusted. Well, with, with, with I tell you what, hold the on players to. to me look like now we got a new boss. We got to prove ourselves. Because I'm looking. I, I, I'm still amazed that Joe Looney. Joe Looney's belly is smaller than mine. Damn it. Joe Looney, you know, you, you, shit. Joe Looney put on Zeke Elliott's jersey right now. You might confuse him with Zeke Elliott. You okay. remember that picture before? Where, uh, no, it, it ain't like that no more. It, even Joe Looney is cut. I'm telling you, these guys are on a mission. All right, well, we'll see. I'm Mark Holmes with Mike Matthew Fitness. I need to get all this shit off my hands. I'm riding all the shit on my hands in my truck. Damn. Mess this bad boy up. I'll see you soon.